Hello, today I'm going to be making a rose, so I need to make one anyway for a commission, so I figured I might as well do a video on it. I've got this piece of sheet steel, it's about 2mm thick, and I'm going to use this for the petals. It's a little bit thicker than I would usually use for rose petals, but I want this to be a big rose as it's going to go on a house sign, and so it'll come underneath the name of the house, and I want it to be there nice and big. So I've used this thick steel, so we've got some big petals on it. I've got some templates, which we can stick on, and then cut those out with the angle grinder. But after cutting them out, they need to go in the forge, and I need to taper the ends, so the, the, the ends of the petal aren't too mil thick. They're coming down to a nice fine edge, and that just makes it really nice, really good. The templates here give you a bit of scale on just how big this rose is gonna be. So that's the biggest, biggest petal that we're gonna have and then that's the smallest one. So I want it to be nice and big, and I mean, it's obviously the, the, the rose isn't gonna be that diameter as we're, we're going to curl all of these petals up, but it'll be probably four inches maybe wide, hopefully, nice and big. So I've got some super glue. I'll stick all these templates down, and then we can cut them out with the angle grinder. There we go, all the petals cut out. I've realized this template is just a little bit too sharp on the corners. So I'll just come on with a grinding disc or sanding disc, nip that corner off so it's nice and rounded. We will get a bit more sort of a, a rounded edge when we flatten them out, draw those tapers out on each of the, each of the petals. But I just want to help it along and just get a little bit more of a radius. So it's a little bit more natural rather than having that pointed edge. So something like that will probably do, just a little bit more of a radius on the edges, which this will then be sort of exaggerated and pulled out as we draw these petals out into a nice taper in that dimension there. I think for the rest of them, I'll clamp them in the vise, because that was a bit awkward trying to do it on the, on the bench. It was much easier to round off these corners in the vise there. I just want to quickly speak about the petal and the, the design of the template. And so you can see that we have quite a big gap here. When we're squashing these down and tapering them, we allow for a little bit of gaining in width in this direction as well as this direction. So the petals shouldn't overlap when we draw this material out, hopefully. Also, another point is that I haven't drilled the center hole or punched the center hole for these these petals and that's because during this forging stages of tapering this out and then putting the first initial shape into the petals in doing all of those forging steps what can happen is that hole if we've already drilled it will be distorted and go off off circular and off dimension so we leave that until the very end after all the forging steps are complete. I'll put these in the fire, heat these petals up and draw them out now. So I've got a curved faced hammer. So we've got that nice round edge on the end of the hammer to reduce surface area contact so we can draw that material out much faster in all directions.
So you can see there, I'm also bouncing the steel as I'm hitting it. And that's because the amber will act as a heat sink. This is quite thin, thin material. So if we just hold that down on the anvil, the anvil's gonna take all the heat out of it. So if we, in between the hits, bounce the steel, you keep your heat much longer on the petals. So now we've got those petals nice and tapered and, and flatter, I'm gonna take a cross peen hammer and texture them. But we'll only texture them on one side, as if you try and texture on two sides, when you flip it over, your anvil will get rid of the texturing. So you texture the outside of the petals, and then that goes, so we've textured that side, that'll go that way up on the flower, so when we wrap the petals up, the texturing is on the outside. You can see that texturing there, and the, the lines sort of arc along the petals. They're not you know, parallel to each other. They, there's a bit of a bit of a swoosh, bit of an arc on them. Anyway, I'll get all the rest of the petals to this stage, and then we can carry on and start putting the first shaping into each of them. All the petals are textured up. We've got to put that bit of shape in them. They've also you can see they've grown a bit in volume and that's because of that tapering, that spreading and then the, the cross peen marks will spread it as well in, in this dimension. So to start the shaping, I've got this swaging tool so we can put the petals in there and the top goes on, we squash them down. I might need to do the big one by freehand because the, the swage tool is a little bit too small for it but we can start off with with the small one, get that in there and begin to dish them all. So I'll put a little bend in, bring those two up and make sure the texture is going in down. And hopefully this is going to bend correctly. Take another heat. So I'll take this to a wooden block to get a tighter radius. You can see it's not quite overlapping just yet. I'll just show you how I'm dishing this larger petal. What I'm doing is I'm just taking the ball peen of the hammer and coming on and getting a nice radius on the petal there. You can see we've got the texturing on the outside. <sighs> Make sure that it's nice and clean in there, get all the scale out. You really want a nice cup on the petal from the start to prevent a square rose. Because if it's not all nice and rounded, you can get a square rose at the end, which is not good. There aren't many natural things that turn out as a square. You can see there what I mean by the overlapping. I open that bit, you can see I got this pair of tongs just to bring one of them in, one of them out, so they, they overlapped in the correct way to match all the other petals. And so these two are on the inside and those two on the outside. So this is the biggest petal, so they're going right on the outside and all the rest are sitting in there. Anyway, let's move on now to making the stem which is gonna come on here and it's gonna have a little tenon on the end which we can put through. I need to drill some holes in all of the, all of the petal layers. So the tenon will go through and then we can rivet it down. For the stem, we'll start to create a tenon using just two eight mil bars to get that shoulder in nicely. Get it in there nice and neat.
So I'll take a measure on it and see roughly what sort of a size we're looking at. So we're just over six, 6.3 I would say, which will be fine, that's, that's, that's usable. So we'll drill the hole in the petals at about 6.5 mil, so we've got a little bit of wiggle room on the tenon. What I'm going to do now is come on behind it, create another little isolation, taper down this material, then we can get a monkey tool on there, probably put it in the vise and upset that down so we've got a square shoulder there and a square shoulder there caused by the vise. There's that nubber material on the end, nice and flat. Got a good square shoulder either side so we can clamp it into the vise there, put our bundle of flower petals over this tenon and rivet that down, securing those petals in place. So here's our bundle of petals. Got them all nice and beginning to cup together. I decided not to use the wooden block on this one, I figured that we can do the rest by, by hand with the tongs once it's all riveted onto the stem. So I need to put a centre mark on each of them, just a little centre punch, so I can then drill the holes to 6 mil, 6.5 mil. To get a centre punch on the flowers or the petals, I'm going to use a ball peen so I can just rest that on there and then get a centre punch. Just dot the middle. So I'll drill all these holes to 6.5 mil. I'll just do that off camera as it's drilling, it's pretty boring really. As well as the flower, I'm going to do two leaves. You can see I finished up this one. It's nice and big to match the flowers. The, the actual rose is going to be, you know, a decent size. So I have done a video on making a rose leaf like this before, though it's a bit smaller than this one. But I'll just quickly go over this. So I'll flip this bar around, fudge one on the other end, and just quickly show you that. There we go, the second leaf's done. It's a little bit smaller than that one, but that's okay. So we've got a bit of variety between the two. I've got to weld these onto this main stem piece. What I'll do is I'll cut them as a scarf, you know, cut them on, a, on, a, on an angle so we've got a bit of a scarf going, and then tack weld them onto this stem piece just with the stick welder, then bring, then bring it up to a forge welding heat and get it all nice and solid, a good weld on, onto the stem. We've got it tack welded together, time to bring it up to a nice forge welding heat and really get them stuck together. That weld's gone pretty good. You can see it there, nicely run in. So I've got a little bit of thinking to do on what I want to do next, whether we put the bend into the stem and the leaves and then attach the bundle of petals 
or do the petals first and then do the bend after. I think I'm gonna bend the stem and the leaves first as long as we can still get it in the vise. We should be okay. got a nice sort of swooping shape to the to the stem and so this is going flat against a, a piece of sheet steel which has the name of the house in so obviously at the moment the rose would sort of be pointing up and you wouldn't really see it very well so I want to bend bend the tenon bend just behind a little collar there forward so that the rose is pointing forward so you can see it a bit better and I think that'll be easier to do now rather than when it's got all the petals on. I've got the stem clamped in the vise, so I'm gonna put all the bundles of petals over and using this little tool, which just has a hole in, drive them on so that they're nice and flush against that little collar. Then I can mark out roughly how much material I need and cut the tenon to length. I'll cut that tenon to length, then heat it up and we can get this bundle of flowers riveted on. that nice tight center these last two layers we can do a little bit more open and sort of have the ends of the petals just coming over a little bit and opening the rows out rather than it being tight you can see there the roses come a little bit loose which is why we leave that hole so that we can still get this tool in there and drive the tenon on a little bit more. So, you see it's now back on nice and tight. So that's just a little tip, leave that hole in until the end where you can then close it up if you want, or you can leave it as it is. It, you know, it still looks pretty decent. There we are, that's the finished rose. As you can see, it is pretty big. Those two leaves, you know, two nice decent sized leaves on the bottom and then a big 
head at the top. And as I was saying, this is going to go on a sign. And so you're not going to be close. You know, you're not going to be looking at the rows really close up. So it wants to be nice and big so you can still see a bit of the detail if you're further back looking, looking at, the, at the sign. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed watching me make this and maybe even learned something. And I'll catch you on the next one.